Alrighty, guys, we are live again this week. Welcome back to the Korean Cowboys podcast. Yes, hello, everybody. We hope you had a great week, and we hope you in- you liked our introductory uh, first podcast. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we kind of introduced who we were, what we're doing here, why you should listen to us, what our story was, but only today do we get into the meat and potatoes of this podcast. Yes, sir. So um, last week, we kind of gave like a little spoiler. Yes. Uh, we talked about what we're going to talk about this week, which right. was our lives as former K-pop idols. Yes. And I think a lot of people are curious about this topic. So I think it is one that will, you know, be interesting to talk about. Right. I mean, you know, and to be honest, we also realize this, you know, we're kind of using the fact that we were K-pop idols as a springboard to kind of bring different perspectives to a variety of different issues and, you know, all topics. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So like, you know, we're, but we figured it would be smart to start here. Yeah. Because that's also the one thing that we both have in common. Like, we have a lot of things in common, but this is the one thing that is the biggest talking point between us for a podcast. I guess, like, for work, yeah. Yeah, work like, work-wise. Wise, yeah. Yeah. I mean, if it wasn't for us both being idols, we would have never met, so. That's true. Yeah, so, you know, that's it all kind of goes back to there, you know? Yeah, so, uh, Joel, why don't, you tell, why don't you tell the listeners and viewers uh, a little bit about your work experience as, like, a K-pop idol? Okay, well, I'm going to start from the very beginning then, right? So, like I mentioned last time, I come from a really small town down in uh, Gyeonggi-do called Songtan. Songtan, yeah. Now, when I went there, uh, I knew a girl named Tia who mm. was in another K-pop idol group called Chocola. And we, I've known them for a long, 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 long time. Yeah, you know, yeah. the, all, Most members of that group I knew because we all went to the same schools and everything. Right. So, what happened was like, I knew her from like way back when. And I remember I was going to college. And my friend, Tia, asked me, she called me and she was like, hey, are you interested in being like doing K-pop? And I was like, uh, I'm not really sure. But the thing is, is like when I, before I moved to Korea, I was always like, I want, kind of want to go into acting. Like that's kind of what I want to do. Right. Um, so I really didn't give it much thought, honestly. But what happened was, was I was like, you know what? Let me go and meet this company. So I went to meet this company and then I... I just like I sang and rap for them apparently really badly because that's what they said. <laughs> <laughs> but then, you know, I auditioned and then the next day or not even that the next day, that day, they were like, can you start coming out starting tomorrow? Oh, wow. Yeah. So uh, after I had a lengthy training period of about a year and oh. then I debuted in a group in 2014 called BTL Beyond the Limit. Nice. Yeah. So that's my like how I actually got to that point. Now, I can get more in detail. And I probably will. But right. yeah. How about you? Like where 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 did you start at? Where How'd that go? Uh, So I think I briefly mentioned it uh, our last episode. Mm-hmm. Um, I was casted in 2009 in L.A. Mm-hmm. at a uh, festival called Changto. Mm-hmm. It's a I festival know that, that yeah. happens in a Koreatown every year. Mm-hmm. Um, I got casted there. Um, I went to an audition. I sang So Sick by Neo. <laughs> I'm sure a lot of our listeners already know that. Um, if you guys didn't, there you go. Um, <laughs> they asked me to dance for like 30 seconds mm-hmm. in front of the camera. And at the time, I did not dance. I didn't like dancing. Uh-huh. So I literally just clapped my hands for 30 seconds. Oh, my gosh. You know, I went back home thinking, you know, they're not. They're not going to take <laughs> me in. You know, like, sure, I was casted. But, like, after seeing that audition, no way. Mm-hmm. But um, they actually called me very similar to, you, like, a week later saying, you know, we want to fly you out to Korea. Mm-hmm. You know, put you in, like, the training system for a week. And then, you know, like, we'll decide if you want to sign you or not. So I think that winter I went to Korea, came to Korea for like a week or two, mm-hmm. um, trained, and I signed my official contract, and then went back to the states, finished high school, mm-hmm. came to Korea, trained for nine months, and debuted as a member of the K-pop group, newest or newest, whatever you guys want to call it. <laughs> um, and yeah, that was I guess the last ten years of my life from 2012 to this year. Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, I, I've actually I've, I've heard this story a million times, but you know, I think it's people that they say like, oh, I bombed this audition. I feel like every person that has become gone on to be idols and stuff, they feel like they totally bombed the audition. Yeah. But then they end up actually making it. Yeah. And then people that, you know, a lot of people I've talked to think they kill an audition and they never get a call back. Like, yeah. it's, it's really funny how the system works. Like, I I remember exactly what I sang. I, I sang... <laughs> what did you sing? I rapped Burbuto out of my G-Dragon. <laughs> and then I sang Teary Eye by Missy Elliott. And I did some dance. I think it was by this guy named Jeremiah. Like yeah. there was some, I did some dance and listen, I've seen my audition video years later. How like, was it? Oh my God. It's, it's dreadful. <laughs> like it's really, really, really bad. So like I actually have it saved on my computer. Do you really? Yeah. So like when my, like when everything kind of went south, like I, there, I saw, I had all the files like on the, the computers at my company and I took everything and I found it on there and I was like, Oh my God. 
Like it was insane. I saw it and I was I almost threw up. Oh <laughs> man. I don't I don't think I've ever seen my audition videos. Mm -hmm. I think like after I filmed them, they just disappeared or maybe the company like my former I'm sure company still there. has them i have no idea mm. yeah. well you know what i bet you <laughs> i bet you if you saw it you'd done pass out because i almost did out of embarrassment i was by myself <laughs> yeah it's uh, <laughs> not very good times yeah but i mean like you know speaking of what are you what are you doing now though like you know as so you mentioned like oh you were an idol from 2012 to 2022 right. i was an idol from 2014 to or yeah 2014 to 2016 right and you know i've i've kind of been floating around or i did float around for a while right you know um, i'm new, i'm now signed to another company Company, but not as a singer more as like a you know variety show guy and like you know model yeah. and actor and whatever but um you know i mean that's kind of what i do now but like you know and and this this new project this this uh podcast project has definitely kind of up my ante a little bit like where there would be like these long periods of time where you know if when you're like a like yummy, you would have guess, work yeah, yeah, yeah when you're busy you're super busy but when you're resting you're like just got nothing forever yeah yeah but i think this podcast definitely keeps my toes keeps me on my toes it keeps me busy constantly which yeah. is great i mean what about you like how do you feel about like all that what do you do i mean i mean so for me i guess after um you know i guess being an idol um i've I've only been focused on this, actually. Mm. I, th I think you know this better than anyone no, yeah, else. No, I know. You know, I, I have been wanting to do a podcast for a long time. We've been wanting to do one together for a long time. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think, you know, um, once I knew that I wasn't going to be a K-pop idol anymore, I think that's when I started to move mm -hmm. and, you know, prepare for this podcast. So, yeah, what I'm doing these days is solely focused on this, you know, recording episodes mm -hmm. um, and then editing, you know, just I think spending my time doing that. Yeah, I mean, you know, so for those of you guys, like, I'm actually very, very shocked because, like, we, we have, like, a, 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 what do you call it, group chat room with the producer and, like, all the, and both of us. And, like, you know, we constantly bounce ideas. And Aaron is in that room just all day long sending in, yeah. like, ideas and, like, all this stuff. And I was like... Because uh, he started sending in like these, oh, the future. Oh, stop it. Oh, stop no. it. Oh, stop it. <laughs> no, the future episodes. He's buttering me up. Uh, the future episodes, <laughs> like ideas and like little outlines and stuff. And he's sending all the, and I, he sent like three or four of them. And I was like, man, I feel like I'm slacking. I better get on this. So, like the next day I like typed up like three or four and I tossed them too. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's a, I don't know, but I'm just saying like Aaron's really, really into this. I mean, I am too, but like, yeah. you know, I'm, it's very, you know, it's good to see you like staying busy, you know? So cheers, I guess, to the second episode. Yes. You guys are wondering what this is. This is whiskey. Yes. Because we you are know, the Korean cowboys. Yeah. We mentioned we're from the West and we like rootin' tootin' whiskey drinking machines, you know? I'm not from like that part of the West. <laughs> I'm from LA, like a big city, but I mean, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So going back to, you know, being a K-pop idols and you know, whatnot. Why don't we talk about our trainee days? Okay. How about that? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I can start here, but um, I think my trainee period was honestly out of my whole career as an idol. Right. And I consider the, the Yunsip Sang or the trainee period part of that. Yeah, of course. And honestly, my best memories come from when I was a trainee. Really? Not so much from after I debuted. It, wow. I don't have, I mean, there, there's great memories there too, but the most memories that I can remember really vividly come from me being a trainee. Really? You know, it's like, I know that's weird, right? Yeah. But then again, you also have to remember, like, I'm not like you. My career was very short lived, but you know, <laughs> you know, you, you were on for 10 years. <laughs> yeah. I was there for like two and a half. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But, um, I think like that at that point, cause when I became a trainee, it was, I was the only foreign trainee in the whole company. Oh, wow. Okay. And, well, in my group too. Right. But um, at the time, my company was like this tiny, tiny, tiny company. It was like in this little basement right. over by Nambu Bus Terminal. Ah, okay. And like um, at the time, I was also going to college. So I was going to Yonsei University, which mm. is at Shinchon, which is like way on the other end of Seoul. Oh, so you were a college student and a trainee at the same time. Yeah. So oh, I they when they asked to sign me, First of all, I looked, I, you know, I was like kind of wary about contracts. You know, you hear all these stories and stuff. And I was like, oh man, I don't know. I'm kind of scared. Like blah, blah, blah. But I, uh, I ended up when I did sign, I was like, I made a stipulation. I was like, I have to be able to go to school. Otherwise I'm not doing this. Of and course. they agreed. They yeah. were like, oh, absolutely. So I would actually go to school in the morning. And then I would right after, I think I made sure that I did all my classes up until about 12 o'clock. And then I would go from, I would go straight to the company and practice to like, I don't know, 1030 or whatever. Oh, wow. And then I would go home and I would repeat that every day, six days a week. Okay. So school in the morning to 12 and then from there, mm -hmm. like eat lunch and then practice until 1030 and then go home, rest. Yeah. Do homework. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. It, yeah. It was, it was a really rough schedule. I you know most idols, 
they actually kind of start really young. Like a lot of them do it when they're like in middle school. Yeah. Or, you know, especially these days. Yeah. Kids are so young. Yeah. They're so young now. So like, I'm not unique in that, but I think it was, it's very difficult. I had a really hard time with it. I can't imagine what a middle high schooler goes through, you know? Yeah. Mm. So uh, I guess for me, um, my trainee uh, days, I started at the age of 18. I started in 2011, June. Oh, you remember this? Yeah, yeah. So I, I came, I graduated, I think, June 9th. Mm-hmm. That's my sister's birthday. Maybe I'm getting confused, but somewhere around there. Mm-hmm. And then a week later, I did fly out to Korea, and that's when I started um, my trainee period. Mm-hmm. So I think yours and I were similar, but kind of different. Like mm-hmm. the long uh, the long practice hours were the same, but um, for me, it was, you know, we talked about it a little bit last episode. My Korean wasn't you know, up standard. Mm-hmm. It wasn't good at all. Actually, it was non-existent. Right. So my company would, uh, they used to send me to like Korean hagwon, mm-hmm. like a Korean, um, Korean school. Right. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm not going to lie. I did not go to most of those classes. You terrible, terrible. I mean, but I, mean, I know, but like, <laughs> you'll know like why when I tell you the story. So okay. um, usually the classes were, I think somewhere from like, like 930 to like maybe 11, 1130, 12 in the morning. Yeah. Okay. And we would, you know, train, like practice, you know, singing, like singing lessons, dance lessons, you know, like, I guess exercise. Mm-hmm. We would go into, like, into the a.m. Really? Until I would say like 3, 4 a.m. Man. but and, it, that, and that was like a grueling nine months of that for me. But see, at that point, you were probably doing suksu sangar, which is like living in dorms, right? Yeah, yeah, I was living in a dorm at the time, so... Yeah, so I would I like we'd finish at three four. I'd go into Suxo, like the dorms. Um, we'd take turns showering because you know we only had one bathroom at the time, mm-hmm. and at the time there were there were nine of us, mm-hmm. I think mm-hmm. something like that. So it would take a while, and you know when I wake up in the morning, you know I, like I'm like I'm assed out, you know I'm yeah. tired. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. like I have no energy, you know. Mm-hmm. So what I would usually do, um, what I used to do was uh, go to a PC bang, go to like a, like an internet cafe, mm-hmm. and you know just just sit there, you know just stare into space you know like maybe take a little nap you know um (laughs) and i used to get uh, i hate to get um calls from my korean teacher all the time asking me where i'm at Mm -hmm. and i would say i'm so sorry i'm like too tired to go to class Mm -hmm. even if i go right now i can't focus Uh uh-huh you know i'd rather you know just get some rest did you say that in korean yes in very in very (laughs) broken korean she didn't understand me but you know like she's a teacher so she knew english too yeah right so um that's how my schedule was as a trainee yeah, you know, yeah. but I think I think what differs so much between you and I is that I wasn't living in the dorms back then. My company was far right. too not well off to even afford dorms, you know. So I actually was living in Itaewon. So I would go from Itaewon in the morning time. I'd go from Itaewon, where I lived, to Shincheon, to right. Gangnam, and then back to Itaewon at night. Oh, man. So, like, I was living with a bunch of friends at the time. Right. And uh, it was it was really, really rough. And I remember, I remember also, because you said you have all of these different classes and stuff. Yeah. Now, I don't know, like, what the system was there, but my company was more like, you do gain yunsip, uh, self-practice like, yeah. for, like, five hours, and then we would actually idonghe or move yeah. to another part of Seoul to go to the dance studio oh wow okay. so it wasn't like super they weren't super like you know they were like if you practice it'll work like you know that's basically what they did yeah yeah yeah. which i don't really agree with i think like you know, there's some things you need to learn um but yeah so that's what happened and like by the time i got home i was so hungry <laughs> yeah. even though i ate like so much during the day i got so hungry that like i would just get like these these packed you know, dinner, like doshi docs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dinners, like from a convenience store. And Little I would eat one boxes, yeah. every night. I mean, the tonkasu ones or the big wang sausage ones. Those are the ones that like, I ate them every single day. And then let me tell you, actually, when I was a trainee, I was actually pretty heavy for a trainee. And like, we How would do these. Way? Way. Oh man. I think at one point I reached 75 and a half kilos. I mean, but that's not, that's, that's not like too much for your height. For, but but for, when you're an idol though, when you're first getting ready to debut, you have to like, that's true. they kind of like weigh you all the time or whatever. And then, I, you know, I remember some of the staff used to chew me out. They'd be like, you know, they were not, yeah. they would say some not nice things. Like right now, like it's definitely different right now. Oh, like yeah. now, like the trend is, you know, like kind of mm-hmm. like being buff, being yeah. built, you know, having like a healthy body. But right. back then it was like skinny was the look. Yeah. And I, like you had to be skinny. Yeah. They wanted me to like basically fit into a size zero, like, you know, and you know, I mean, 
there that was around the time where there was a few idols like 2 p.m for example like they were still around they were doing big stuff and they were all like these known as these like big beastly manly men you know what i mean yeah yeah you know i mean but most idols when they first debut most of them typically tended to be super thin yeah you know so i mean i got chewed out a lot for that i mean no thanks to the doshi dogs from the peony jump <laughs> <laughs> no similar to you i used to um no matter how like late we ended, whether it be three, four, or five a.m., I would always stop by the convenience store and eat like like a cup noodle. <laughs> like that was my thing every mm. night. But um, I mean, did, did you find that you gained weight? Because you don't really gain weight that easily, do you? So back when I first came to Korea and like maybe my trainee period days, mm -hmm. I I weighed somewhere between like sixty six to like seventy two. Would go back and forth. That's pretty heavy, or not heavy, but that's pretty like a lot. Like like, like a lot bigger than I am yeah. like now. Yeah. Mm. If you guys didn't know, I used to. Uh, work out a little bit in high school yeah i've um, seen pictures of aaron like when when he was like you know much younger and then <laughs> he has this he has, used to have this picture on instagram and it said back day anyway it, it, was, <laughs> it was like the most obnoxious picture he was like a making or you know like gloating about his back muscles Let's like back. yeah sometimes i send a screen capture to him like i don't think it's there on there anymore but I, sometimes i send him screen captures about it. it's funny <laughs> yeah um yeah, he, he makes fun of me for that photo till this oh, day. Oh, he makes fun of me for a lot of photos, too. So oh. don't get it twisted. If only you guys knew <laughs> the photos I have of this guy on my mm. phone. <laughs> oh, don't tease them. <laughs> so uh, back on topic. Yes. Uh, what did it feel like to debut as like an official K-pop idol when you debuted? What was it like? Well, I mean, I don't know how you heard, but like my group went through a lot of like member changes. There were so mm -hmm. many over okay. the course of the year. I think what was like 25 people eventually got whittled down to nine. Oh wow. You know, but I think, I think for the most part, the people that were going to be in the final lineup, I yeah. think, you know, there was a few of us, but I think we were always kind of more safe than a lot of other people. Okay. Okay. Um, and I think I was kind of there, the one that had to be like, they need an English speaker and blah, 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 mm. blah. I mean, we first heard about it. Um, we got our first album and our second album songs all at the same time. Oh wow. Like we got, you know, the guides, Okay, okay, you know, okay. so like the guides are basically, you know, you know, it has like it's a regular song with someone singing over it with the melody, right? And then you, and then you learn the melody yeah. and then you record it, yeah. Yeah, it didn't even have any like lyrics; it was just you know humming or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway, we got the songs and then um, we decided, or we didn't decide anything, but we would listen to them and like you know we would practice them and then we went into the choreography and then one day we just heard that we were debuting. Nice. And it was honestly, we had no idea when we were debuting. It oh, just wow. kind of kind of came out of nowhere. Like it came as, oh, you guys have. Uh, music video next week or whatever like oh, wow, it just kind of okay. came out of nowhere there was no communication there they just kind of just popped it on us i, mean, I kind of just like threw it at you i guys. mean and i was happy but then i was also like kind of scared yeah because i was like okay well the trainee period's over now and now this is where the real work begins and you know i'm gonna be honest with you i thought that when i heard i was debuting i was like i made it that's what i thought yeah, that's what most people think. And I was so, so, so wrong. Yeah. <laughs> like, really wrong. Yeah, no, we'll get into uh, that a little bit later. Yeah, really? Yeah. Yeah, about you? Uh, you know, like, after, you know, because my trainee period compared to a lot of people's mm -hmm. was very short. It was How nine months for me. Nine months. Oh, man, you had even a shorter one than I did. Yeah, so um, this is a funny story. Uh -huh. uh, before I flew out to Korea... Um, in 2011, I think it was maybe April or May. Mm -hmm. um, I flew out in June. Uh, my company gave me a call and they said, you're in the final lineup for the group. You oh, are really? going to be a member. Already? Yeah. <laughs> Without me training. So uh, I was like, oh, damn. I must be good. I must be hella They got good. like some I good eyes. You I look good looking or oh, something. God. Like, or my, my vocals are on point. Oh, stop saying that, man. People aren't going to listen to us anymore. <laughs> back, I'm just kidding, guys. But back then, my vocals were pretty bad. Anyways, mm -hmm. um... Uh, I trained for nine months and like I debuted and for me, it's it's kind of hazy to me right now, I guess, because mm -hmm. it's been 10 years, but um, like it didn't feel real. Do you know what I mean? Like it felt not surreal, but like even like when we were like recording our first actual debut stage, mm -hmm. like I, I didn't have that thought like, oh, I'm finally a celebrity. I'm a K-pop idol. I made mm -hmm. it. For me, it was just like another day. Really? Yeah, but was, you know what though? It I was a little weird. I think you're just kind of like that, like in general. Yeah, a little like bit. Like you kind of like, not that you don't care, but it's like, you just don't, you're just like, oh, it's another day, another dollar, you know, whatever. <laughs> like, that's <laughs> kind of that's how, that's kind of how you are on the day to day. But yeah, yeah I, I, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, the whole process of going up and actually ended up, ending up debuting, like it was really, do you remember the day like that you debuted or when you heard you were debuting, like the day that you debuted? Do you remember? Yeah, I do remember. Uh -huh. Um, It was uh, March 15th, 2012. Mm -hmm. Um, we debuted on, uh, M, M, M blink. 
mm-hmm. and Blink Down. Okay. You know what I'm talking about, mm-hmm. right? Um, the Countdown. Yeah. Okay. And uh, my, I think my mom flew out, I think, for... Actually, no, she didn't fly out for that. She flew out for a third album. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, I do remember uh, debuting on stage and um, everyone else was really excited. But for me, maybe it's because... So before... A little backstory before I actually became a trainee and stuff. I didn't know a whole lot about K-pop. Mm-hmm. I didn't even know it was like a genre. Mm-hmm. And so you know, um, I like I never watched the music show. Like I said, I learned about music shows during my trainee period, but you know, I never really watched them. You know, like I never really enjoyed them. But um, yeah, for me, like filming that first music show, it was like it was just like whatever for me. Maybe it, maybe it's my personality. Mm-hmm. I don't know, but for me, it wasn't very like it wasn't like breathtaking you know really yeah i don't i mean because i mean i guess everyone has a different reaction because yeah. like you know every one of your group members there was five of you yeah and i'm sure all of you guys had a different like oh, yeah, reaction to it i mean for me there was nine of us and i remember so this is actually true so i also debuted on on countdown yeah on may may 5th <laughs> Or May fifteenth, okay, okay. May fifteenth, two thousand fourteen. Um, but I remember I we went up on stage and I, there wasn't like me being like like you. I was kind of like eh, whatever. Like it's just a, it's just a thing, yeah. you know. But I, <laughs> <laughs> but I went up on stage and I did it and I killed it, mind you. And then I remember I came back down off the stage. Yeah, right there. You know, he always makes fun of me for that song. Don't worry, I make fun of myself too. But anyway, <laughs> we came off down the, uh, on stage and I, I I'm not kidding you. For the first time in my entire life. I actually cried like tears of happiness. Oh, wow. I've never done that in my life. I mean, I don't really cry that much in general, but like, uh, excuse no, me. Anyway, it, it, <laughs> this is not uh, air my laundry time. But anyway, <laughs> but I actually like cried tears of happiness. Like it was wow. insane because I, I think I had a really hard time when I was a trainee because there was so much cultural difference. Yeah. Language difference. And it all kind of just came flying back in my face. Yeah. So like, and I just, I kind of was like, oh, I finally did it. Like I'm actually on TV. Like I can't believe it. You know, I'm like things that I've only thought about for so long. Like it actually happened. And like, it was just like really surreal. And like, I, and ever since then, and from that day forward, it was like, it was like, okay, now I just got, naman yorishimi hamyan. If I work hard, you go, they get to you. Like, you know, it's going to, everything's going to turn out well. Turn out well. Yeah. All right, so a lot of people are probably, you know, going to wonder, what was your schedule like post debut? Because we told them about our schedules mm-hmm. as trainees, right? What was what was your schedule like, man? Because you know, I, when you're when you're a, a shining artist or like a new artist, you have to hustle. Yep. You know what I mean? Like you got sleep. What's that basically? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, because so you know, it, it, depending on what your company is, how much pull they have in getting music shows, because they basically have a music show for every single day of the week. Yeah. Um, and depending on what company you're in, you can go all shows all week long, or you, maybe you just do a couple here and there. Yeah. But um, my company had us doing every single show every single day of the week. I mean, that's good. I guess from like from like a promotional standpoint, that's a very good. Oh yeah, it's thing, it's yeah. really good for you career wise, but terrible for your sleep schedule. What sleep schedule? Actually, <laughs> there is none. So, how many hours did you sleep? On like a typical day when you're promoting a song, I I'd say three to four, if that. Yeah. Um, because I mean, depending on because every show starts at a different time, and it depends if it's a recording or if it's like a live show or whatever. Yeah. Um, but listen, sometimes I woke up at like one thirty in the morning or oh, two thirty yeah. in the morning, and then go to the shop, you know, the hair makeup, and then you go and you do rehearsals. And it's like literally. Just if you're newly debuted, don't expect more than like four hours of sleep for that period. You know, I mean, you too, probably. Right. Yeah. No, same with me. I think when I first debuted, like even up until like recently, like if I'm promoting a song, I'd probably sleep like at most, like you said, like three, four hours, like Mm -hmm. typically like two hours. Um, It's it's definitely fun promoting the song and, you know, meeting fans, you know, like, you know, having all that, you know, it's receiving all that love. Like, of course, we're thankful for that. But, you know, like it is also very taxing on the body while you're promoting a song. Oh, man. Like I remember because there's kind of an unwritten rule that when you're a new artist, like even if you go to your tegi show, your waiting room, your green room. Yeah. You're not really supposed to sleep. Like I, at least that was how it was for me. They didn't let us sleep simply oh, because you no. never know if someone was going to come in like a writer or a PD or something. And if everyone's sleeping, it doesn't look good. Yeah. If you're a new artist. Yeah, so yeah. basically they've, we were not allowed to sleep at all, but we also weren't allowed to leave our Deggy shares either without permission, without permission. And if okay. we did, our managers followed us. So it was like, I basically had to somehow keep myself awake in the waiting room for like sometimes five, six, seven hours sometimes. So and what did you do to keep yourself awake? Oh, I don't even know. Cause back then I had no phone. I didn't have <laughs> no tablet PCs. I had nothing. Did you really not have a phone? Back no, no. Then? I, okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> I didn't have a phone. I had an iPod <laughs> that had Kakao Talk installed on it. And if you think that no idols have phones or whatever, it, don't kid yourself. <laughs> you oh, know? yeah. You know, I mean, people find ways. You know what I mean? And we did. And you know what? I'll tell you what. We also got caught. <laughs> oh, and, yeah. Oh, my Lord. That was, I think that day was probably one of the hardest. But I mean, like, oh. I, I, I feel like a lot of idols go through that. Like, same with me. Uh-huh. Um, well, actually, not for me so much because, you know, I'm on a time difference with my parents. So, mm-hmm. like, I do need to call them. Like, for morning for us, it's night for them and, you know, vice versa. So, I told my company, I was like, I need a phone. Mm-hmm. I have to contact my parents. So, I ended up getting my phone back. But um, I know a few people who had, um, you know, <laughs> secret phones or, you know, like, we're doing stuff on iPads or whatever. And, mm. uh, you know, we did, like, we did end up, like, you know, getting caught. Mm-hmm. Um, not Not a pretty situation. But I think that's a very, like old school type of like way to you know yeah. raise a that, singer in korea yeah like that's, nowadays like you have like you can't take away phones yeah that's i mean way different now it's i mean it's borderline on the legality issue it's borderline you know crossing into weird territory but yeah um i think so you know, I, I mean so the rule was was like everyone else all the rest of my members their parents were in korea yeah. so they're like if you want to call your parents call them on a landline you know oh, like at wow. the company and they could do that, and they did do it. I could not do that, however, because my parents were living in Germany at the time. Oh, really? So I was like, how am I supposed to get in contact with them? And we were like, send them an email. So for like, <laughs> t- no, I'm not kidding. For two years, I lived without a phone. I only contacted my parents through email. Dude, that's kind of sad. It was, re- it was like borderline. So you didn't hear their voices at all for two years? I f- they, they occasionally, like, they would send me, like, uh, what do you call it? Like, voice clips or video videos or whatever through yeah. email. But, yeah, they didn't let me. Uh, the only time we ever got our phone was when we got Huga. Oh, uh, like a vacation? Yeah, like a vacation or, like, I don't know, Christmas or something like that. Oh, that man. That was the only time that I got to talk to them in person. So sometimes I go back and, like, because I can go to my email. I can read all the stuff like that I was saying. I was like, man, I must have been stressed because I was just, like, droning on about nothing you know yeah i mean i i think that was a little much personally considering i'm also a foreigner they weren't they didn't have mercy on me like they did on you <laughs> you know what i mean yeah no though thankfully my company was very like you know understanding of me at the time so um no i i i had it i would say fairly easy compared to like other people yeah my company was pretty old school that was kind of like a 90s way of doing it you know yeah, what I mean? no, that's true but that's yeah. how like all the older singers like you know were raised yeah they got too, stories so. yeah i mean yeah. i mean i had to go through that but you know what it made me a stronger person in general so yeah <laughs> so after debuting um a lot of artists mm-hmm. they tend to go on you know like tours overseas mm-hmm. did you ever go on a tour or did you ever perform overseas and uh, how was that like well i mean we never went on tour but we did do a lot of overseas promotions, especially in Hong Kong. That's where we went the most. Uh, and it was it was a lot of fun. The thing is, for some reason, we only, we only went to Hong Kong in the summertime, and it was super hot. And for some reason, my company made us walk around in, like, downtown Hong Kong wearing our costumes. Because they were, like, oh, like wanted stage outfits? Yeah, and they oh. wanted to, like, show us off to, like, just, we were, like, <laughs> walking in the, like, in the shopping district wearing our costumes. Hey, man. Was, it's good, like promotional, like not activity, when it's that hot. It's not. I don't like, care how good it is for promotion. It was hot. Like yeah. when you got big old pit stains, that is not. That's not cute. Like you know what I mean? When I was walking around, and people were like, "What are those guys doing? They're walking around like superheroes." And what are those? <laughs> yeah. and, I was, and I had these big old pit stains, and uh. I was just like this gross mess. And, like, it was, but it was fun. Like you know, I had so much uh, Hong Kong hot pot that I don't think I could ever eat it again in my life. Oh, like hogwa? Yeah. Oh my god, I, I ate it. Like love I ate it every single day for like weeks and i was just killing me like i, I can't oh the is good it is good <laughs> but the next day anyways yeah yeah oh my <laughs> we'll gosh talk about that later. now we'll keep it clean right here on korean cowboys yeah <laughs> so uh for me personally um i did do a lot of overseas promotions mm. in my last 10 years um i've had like a like a u.s tour i've had like a like a south american tour mm-hmm. i've been to europe um I've been to Australia, you know, like China, Japan, Thailand, Singapore. I like, I've been to a lot of countries that I thought I would never be able to visit. Mm-hmm. And you know, for me, it was a very uplifting and a very, um, it, it was a privilege for me to meet all these people and all these fans around the world. Mm. You know, um, it definitely made me feel like, you know, like we are, you know, like reaching our goal, you know, of becoming, you know, like I guess I don't want to say famous, but you know, like top idols you know like just seeing all these people giving us so much love and support mm-hmm. um it was very encouraging and it was a very um big i guess motivational factor yeah. in my career mm-hmm. um so I, I i had a great time going overseas you know um right now because of you know like COVID 19 we mm-hmm. can't really go travel mm-hmm. i mean i guess it's i guess regulations right now they're they're starting to lax up a little bit yeah now. yeah 
Mm. So, um, yeah. Well, who knows? Maybe you can go overseas and do some like solo stuff. That'd be cool. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I actually, you know what, actually you going overseas so much, like that was one of the reasons why, like, as we mentioned before that I actually ended up moving in with you. Yeah. Because at the time I was raising, um, two dogs. Yeah. Uh, Noah passed away last year, rest in peace. Mm. Um, and I still have my other dog, Wilson, right now. Yeah. So when I was overseas, um, part of the reason why I moved in was because, you know, when I'm gone for like a week or two weeks at a time, mm -hmm. I needed someone to watch the dogs for me. So, um, yeah, Joel was a very good, I guess, caretaker <laughs> for the dogs, you know. Had a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, a lot, a lot of funny stories. Though. Yeah, we're definitely going to cover those sometime. <laughs> yeah. When you look at, like, your idle career, though, I mean, I have a lot of positive, you know, and then there's a positive and negative and everything, but I got right. episodes and stories for days. I mean, what's, right. like, what's, like, some of the really good positives that you think you had from being an idol, you know? Really good positives. I, I think just like I mentioned uh, briefly earlier, just getting to meet a lot of people around the world mm -hmm. and, you know, just... Just having fans, mm -hmm. you know, having that support base, you know, I think not even just as an artist, but people that like you as a person, mm -hmm. I think having that, you know, very strong foundation um, just helped me grow as an artist and as a person. Mm. And, you know, like I said, it was like a very big like motivational factor for me in my career. I mean, I, I definitely agree with what you're saying, because, you know, when you think about it, uh, I, I think about it like this. I, I'm big on like living my life unique from anybody else's right and you know in the grand scheme of things like you know not not, not that i would i'm not opposed to being an office worker or anything like that right but to live a life that like you can be proud of and i'm very proud of like even though i i totally like they totally tanked but like i've done i've done so many things that like not many other people in the world can do like i've yeah I mean, you've done this also many times, but I've, you know, been on stage in front of 40,000 people, like, yeah. and just these amazing things. I've been on TV and like, I've been to all these places that I would never be able to go if it wasn't for this career. Yeah. And, you know, that's something that's really unique to this profession. Yeah. And also like to be able to go through the hardships that something like some people like an idol goes through. I think it really c builds character. I know that sounds cliche, but it like <laughs> really builds character. No, like, I definitely agree. Like there's no way that I would be as, as, thick skinned and like hard nosed as I am right now, if it wasn't for me being an idol. So I have a lot to thank for it. It was hard. And there's a lot of, there was some times where I was just like, I hate this, but uh, they, it all in the end kind of yeah. coagulated into this positive experience for me. Yeah, no, you mentioned it. I think a very good, like positive point too, is, you know, just it's a once in a lifetime experience. Oh, yeah. Who else is going to have the same experience as me? Mm -hmm. You know, like virtually, I would say maybe like not even 1% of the population, you know? Yeah, no, definitely. And, you know, I saw this statistic actually that somewhere in, like in all in all of Korea, there is something like 10,000 trainees across all different companies. And there's trainees many companies. Are, trainees Tra are like singers. Tra tra trainees for like singing or acting or whatever. Oh, wow. Just trainees. Right. Just trainees. So out of 10,000 trainees, how many actually debut? Uh, I don't know, have a couple hundred, if that. Okay. Yeah. Right. And out of those, how many people actually get to go on TV and like do all these worldwide, you know, experiences and even smaller fraction. And, you know, like it, it, it keep whittling it down. When you get down to groups that actually succeeded, it's you're down to like 0.00009%. But like, you know, like you, you're, you're in a group that succeeded very well. I'm a group that didn't succeed. And, you know, and I actually wanted to bring this up. Like people will be like, Ew, why do we got to listen to Joel drone on about his idol career? Like what is, who, what kind of authority is he? But you know, <laughs> honestly, no, I, I, I think everyone has their own experiences and I think it is good that you tell your story and you share your story. So people understand what it was like, you know? Yeah. I mean, everyone has different experiences. Yeah. Everyone's viewpoint is different. Yeah. I mean, definitely because you could look at someone like Aaron, right? Be like, he is an artist that succeeded in the idol realm, right? So he is an authority on this sort of topic. But I'm a person that failed. But that that is exactly what makes me an authority. Yeah. Also an authority on this topic. Yeah, because true. it's, it's different agree. from you, but I have a viewpoint that you don't have. Exactly. So it's like, you know, it's like the, a nice, nicely wrapped Christmas package. You it's know like what a, I mean? It's like, it's like the yin-yang effect. Yeah, you know what I'm it's saying? Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know? The dark and the light, you know? And when they meet, it's daytime. That's what I'm saying. Uh, the dark and the light meet up in a state. Okay, whatever. Yeah, okay, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we talked about, you know, um, we touched upon the positives of being an idol. What is a negative? A negative? That you experienced personally. Well, to be honest with you, I, I think there's overwhelmingly more positives than negatives, yeah. but the one thing that I deeply regret about it is how I handled myself in terms of... Um, 
like human relations, for example. Okay. I was completely, completely absorbed into this life. I was all in. Mm -hmm. And I, that's all I was looking at was success. That was the only thing I was looking at. I wasn't right. thinking about anything else. Right. At that time, almost all of the friends that I had that weren't, you know, my members, I like cut them out of my life completely. Oh, really? Yeah. It was not, it's not something I'm proud of. Okay. But it was like, this is how I am. Like when I'm, when I'm looking at something and this is all that I care about. Yeah. And like, even, even my parents, like I got so anxious and like just so driven about everything. So like my mom was like, this is actually true. This actually like really kind of broke my heart a little bit. My, I remember my mom, I used to get like really annoyed because like, you know, they always ask me about this and that. And I was so stressed about it. And I was like, I don't want to talk about it. But my mom was like, who are you? Like, <laughs> no, no. She was like, where, where do, where's my son? Like, she, I was like a totally different, I was like a zombie. Course, and like yeah. that was like it kind of like later on like that it kind of like moved past and it kind of broke my heart a little bit because I was like I, I I threw away everything and and then after my group failed I was left with nothing yeah and that was kind of like I regret handling it that way right and if I could go back I would not do that right but I mean that's the one thing like that's just me personally because I'm so driven on what I want yeah that like I look at nothing else but I should have handled it better. I think. How I mean, you? But, like, like I, I think you know, like fully immersing yourself into an experience, mm -hmm. into work, isn't necessarily a bad thing. It's not, but there needs to be balance. There needs to be a balance, right? Yeah, so I couldn't find say. that balance, and then I ended up. I when my group tanked, I had no home, I had no friends, I had nothing. Like it was, it was, it was. You got me, good. buddy. Well, I didn't know you back then. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, actually, like. When I met you, I, the first time I ever met you, you don't remember this. I ask you this all the time. You don't remember. I actually met you because you used to DJ at, at this radio station. I actually met you there. And you, your whole group was promoting uh, the one song where you guys were like knights or something. Oh, yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. yeah. I, you guys were promoting that. And I remember seeing you guys there. And I was like, oh, like, you know, I'm, you know, I'm whoever, whatever. And you were like, oh, yeah. yeah. And then like, I, I bring it up <laughs> I, I all these years later. He doesn't even remember it. Dude, like, when did I go? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not that, I'm not that type of person. I mean, right? no, like, no, no, no. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying like, he just doesn't remember it. I'm like, this yeah, is I like, have, in I have no idea. 2015, I think, or somewhere around there or 16, whenever that album came out. Although I'm not going to lie during that period of my career, I was drinking heavily mm, mm, like mm. i you think i drink a lot now i was drinking heavily like, <laughs> well you don't really drink now but anyway we're going off topic so. we're going a little off topic yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um maybe a negative for me um i guess like once i reached a certain point in my career mm -hmm. i guess like being the public guy it was it was a good thing but it was also a bad thing it was like a double-edged sword mm -hmm. you know um there was definitely like an image that i had to uphold at all times not saying that you know like the image that i showed my fans these last 10 years was fake. It, it is me, mm -hmm. but definitely like a more held back reserved me. Mm -hmm. And there were definitely some guidelines that I did have to follow. And um, I think at one point, like just having to uphold that image, you know, um, just kind of got in my head a little bit. And um, I think you know this better than anyone else. Um, I, I started getting a little paranoid. Oh yeah. You know, like, we were living together at the time. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like I would think like, if we went out to eat, like people were staring at me mm -hmm. um, because there were times where people did like try to follow me home mm -hmm. after I finished work. And, you know, mm -hmm. um, I guess that kind of did contribute to that. But um, just just having that image to uphold and, you know, just being in the public eye 24 seven really put a strain on my mental health, like, mental health, I think mm -hmm. a little bit. Yeah. So, um, yeah, definitely. It was it was it was like a little I was in a weird patch for a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a lot better now. Mm. Um yeah, that I think that was the only negative for me, maybe. Well, and and also like obviously like when you're like trying to make it as an artist, you know, like you're really like a struggling artist. It's hell. <laughs> like 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 monetary wise, mm -hmm. it was very tough. Yeah, no, it was a struggle. Yeah, for sure. I mean, the whole mental issue or not mental issues, mental health. Like it's very, it's very. I think a pretty similar point of discussion for I think anybody that has gone through not just idols but just. It, you, you know, celebrities in general, they all kind of go through that at some, because the stress levels are super high. Yeah. Not that other professions don't have that. They definitely do, but it's, it's high in a different way. Yeah. And it's hard for people to kind of deal with. So I'm, I'm with you. I had a lot of stress problem. I had like a lot of anxiety, yeah. you know, it's, it's, it's like, unless you wear my boots, you don't know what I'm talking yeah. about. You know, you have to be in my position to mm -hmm. understand what I'm going through. Yeah. It's definitely, I mean, I think it's worthy of like a, maybe a whole episode to talk about, honestly. Would, but <laughs> that could be a good episode. Yeah. Who knows? We'll see. Yeah, I mean, we'll see. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So what was one thing that you did to keep positive, like through the rough times when you were going through it? Oh man. Okay. So, this is going to sound really corny, right? 
but I, I I'm a corny person in general. So like yeah, I always, <laughs> I always, I'm a pretty, I'm a pretty positive person in general. So I was like, I, I still think this, still think this to this day, like one way or the other, I don't know how, I don't know when, but one way or the other, I will succeed in what I'm doing. Yeah. I just, I, I keep that in the back of my head and I'm, and nothing else bothers me. I can get through like, you know, periods where I'm not making money or where times are tough, where I don't have schedules or any of this stuff. I can, I can power through that just by knowing that. And like, like you will succeed. Someday. I will succeed. So I'm not worried about it. Mm-hmm. It'll happen. That, I mean, that is a very good, I think mindset yeah. to have for sure. But I mean, when there's time, there are times I, for sure that it does crack a little bit. It does falter a little bit. And that's yeah. when I really, really stress out. There's like a chink in the armor. Yeah. But then I'll like, I'll bounce back eventually you yeah. know what i mean it just takes a little bit of like rest or whatever i mean how about you i mean listen staying positive <laughs> in like this environment is not easy we all know that like you know what i mean like yeah. uh i think for me how to keep positive through the tough times i think a lot of what i did when i was younger was drinking mm-hmm. and I'm, I'm sure a lot of our listeners you know who were i guess fans of mine when i was an idol probably know this but i you know i used to drink a lot back in the day um not so much nowadays because all our friends left <laughs> yeah i mean not not i'm definitely not promoting alcohol as a good like you know yeah, if i could change it like knowing what i do now i'm mm-hmm. older now i would definitely i definitely wouldn't have drinking that much and i also think you know just um having a good support base like mm-hmm. like your parents mm-hmm. you know like I, I used to talk to my parents you know almost every day mm-hmm. um talk to uh my friends in the states mm-hmm. you know and they would always like send me you know encouraging words and one thing that my mom told me when I was really struggling was, if you don't want to do it, just don't do it. You always have a home to come back to in the States. Mm. Like, you can always come back to us, you know. We'll take care of you no matter what. And I think that really, you know, motivated me to, like, you know, kind of get off my ass and work a little harder. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah. Isn't that you? <laughs> you didn't want to go back to the States? So you're like, I got to work harder. Otherwise, I got to go back. Like, <laughs> I mean, there was a little bit of that's that, That's how too. I am. I don't want to go back. So, you know what I mean? I'm like, oh, you always have a home to come back to. But I better get off my ass. <laughs> like, I better, I better hustle because I ain't going back over there. You know, but, you know. No, no, that's good. I mean, you know, definitely. My, you know, family is very important. Uh, the friend yeah. system that we had. I mean, too bad they all left us. Because me and Aaron have, like, all the same mutual friends. And they all moved yeah. back to the States. <laughs> no, I think, like, no matter what type of situation you're in, I think mm-hmm. having a good positive you know definitely like like encouragement next to you people that encourage you mm. i think that's very important no yeah, no no doubt yeah i mean you know you you would think like oh like i could just all i got to do is work hard for myself this is another thing like, i bring it back right i was very eggy joke like i was very like just all about myself i yeah. don't need anybody else i just need to work hard and i'm like success will follow i learned the hard way that is not what happens if i had a like a strong my parents were always there but if i had not kind of i'm not gonna say dumped my friends but yeah. Like if I hadn't just kind of moved away from all of that altogether, I think maybe I wouldn't have had such a hard time when my group disbanded. Yeah. Uh, Cause I was going through it. It was rough. <laughs> yeah. No, definitely like keeping like relations with people, mm. you know, is very important. Definitely. You know, like look at this podcast. Like, yeah, it is self-produced, but mm-hmm. we did have a lot of help from a lot of people that you, yeah. know, you and I have worked with in the past. Mm-hmm. So shout out to you guys, everyone that helped us. Yes. Thank you very much. People that helped us with all the, you know, printing, everything. Like, you know, yeah. we owe you guys a lot. Thank you so much. Yeah. Mm. All right. So today, I guess we'll kind of wrap it up. Um, overall experience. As an idol? As an idol. I think it was a character building, unique experience that no one, or very few rather, get to experience in life. And I don't regret doing it at all. I had a lot of fun. It was hard, but I had a lot of fun. And I can say this. If I wasn't an idol, I wouldn't be in the same company that I am now. I wouldn't be sitting here doing this podcast because I would never would have met you. True. So, you know, it's kind of like, I think it all kind of branches into where I am now today, what I'm doing, yeah. who I am. Yeah. So I, I, it's, it's a big part of my life, you yeah. know? How about you? I think my overall experience, you know, like I said, it was like a once in a lifetime experience, mm-hmm. you know, like I'll. Some of my best memories mm-hmm. from like the last 10 years. Like I'll never forget those memories, you know? Mm-hmm. And um, like you said, it was a very good character building period of my life. And I think it helped me really grow as an artist and as a person. Mm. So, you know, I, w- I want to thank, you know, everyone that supported me for the last 10 years, hopefully are still supporting me. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I just, I, I can't, I can't put it into words the experience that I had. I mean, it's hard to, unless a, you a were there, of, you yeah, know, a lot of ups and downs, but definitely like more ups. 
Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. Yeah, you know, there's a there's a little bit of there's a little bit of hardship and everything. No pain, no gain. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. Hey. I don't know the song. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so last uh, question: advice to people who want to become K-pop idols. Uh, well, let's start with you. Advice to people that want to be K-pop idols, like you know, let's let's give two different perspectives here because I think if you just put your head down, you know, and just work, you know, like just. You have to be obsessed with this career. Mm -hmm. You have to be. Whether it be you practice singing every day for hours on end, whether you practice dancing like every day, hours on end, like what, like you can, you know, practice like your facial expressions for, you know, like when you're on camera on, like on TV, you have to be obsessed with this career. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't have to be obsessed. But of, of course, you have to be obsessed with it, like, you know, like the whole span of your career. But if you build the, like, if you like build the blocks right now, stack the blocks up right now, mm -hmm. you will have a successful career, I think. Right. But it's also, I think, good not to get your hopes too high, mm -hmm. you know, because statistically, like, <laughs> the success it's rate is <laughs> very low. But I mean, I, just the type of person I am, I think if you work hard at something, I think you will succeed mm -hmm. at one point or right. another. You know, I, I think, you know, like, timing yeah. is very important. I think everyone has their own timing. So right. if you guys want to be K-pop idols... You know, just put your nose down and grind, I guess. Yeah, yeah. definitely. What about you? Um, the same things I can say to you guys, if you guys want to be K-pop idols, uh, definitely it is a lot of work. It is going to be hard and it's not easy. And if you're not willing to put your 100% in it, don't even bother. Because if mm -hmm. you're not going to, you're wasting your time. True. And I know there's a lot of like foreign K-pop idol or people that want to be K-pop idols. And like, this is just my like honest, you know, I'm just going to, you know, lay it out there. Don't expect to like it to be easy. Don't just yeah. expect, don't expect people to conform to you. You will have to conform to some degree to this system. That's just how it is. You yeah. know, it's not like, you know, I'm just saying it's not easy. I, you know, and it wasn't even easier for me and I'm half Korean. Yeah. Like us, us being Koreans, yeah. being foreigners, mm -hmm. like we can tell you guys firsthand, mm -hmm. you guys do have to conform to like the Korean culture a little bit. Yeah. You I mean, have to. yeah, it's unavoidable. And I had a hard time and my mom's Korean. You had a hard time. You're full Korean, yeah. but you know, that's just how it is. So like you got to be ready if you want to come and do this, that you really, really have to like put in your all yeah you know so don't expect anything less than that and that's what i can say you know mm. yes, sir mm -hmm. all right guys so for the second episode of the korean cowboys podcast we talked about our former careers as mm. k-pop idols mm -hmm. um we hope you guys uh, got some insight <laughs> into who we are our lives our experiences and hopefully if you guys you know want to be singers or artists or you know whatever you guys want to do in the future we hopefully hopefully we uh gave you guys a some little advice help. a little yeah. help yeah <laughs> Yeah. Uh, next week, Joel, uh, we have a very special episode coming up. Yes, we do. We have a special guest coming next week. Our first guest ever on the Korean Cowboys podcast. If you guys want to know who the guest is, we'll be releasing teasers on our official Instagram, Korean Cowboys podcast. Make sure to follow us. Leave us your comments on there. Or if you guys want to send us an email, mm -hmm. send it to us at hello at koreancowboys.com. You can send us what you like, what you didn't like. You got questions. We, got, we should cover this topic. Send us anything. We'll read all of it. Don't worry. So we love your love and support. So always keep supporting us and we will be so thankful. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. I guess that's it for this episode. Yes. See you guys next week for our special guest spot. We're bringing someone big. <laughs> for our special guest episode. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Have a good week. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. By the way, guys, if you guys want to sponsor our podcast or if you guys want, you know, your products placed on this lovely table, let us know at hello at koreancowboys.com and, uh, yeah, hopefully we'll be able to work together in the future. Shoot us a message. You guys won't regret it. Yes, sir. Bye-bye. <laughs>